okay, I was actually really tempted to just be like, dude, let's do skull holes, skull holes, skull holes in class and just punt on this attempt at a video walkthrough. But then I thought at least doing the walkthrough, we can at least get the basics and then actually identifying these things can happen um, during lab. But at least you'll have a, an idea of what is traveling through these holes, where you would expect to find them. Just know that I've been sitting here for approximately, oh, 30 minutes trying to place things in holes and see, like, can you see my orange pipe cleaner? And can you see my green pipe cleaner? And you can't even see doodly do which doesn't mean that I'm not going to try to show it to you <laughs> because I can't help it. But it just means that if you feel like, oh, I can't see any of that, just listen to the relationships that I'm talking about and know that you, when you have a skull in your hand, you're going to be able to see those things that I'm talking about even if you can't see them now. So take good notes on this section because I am going to walk you through all of it. I'm going to start with the holes that we've identified in the temporal bone. So if you go to your lab, this is how I'm organizing it. I'm just going to start at the temporal bone and I'm going to do every foramen that is highlighted from here on out. And I think there's one foramen that I have not uh, done. It's not even on our list, but I'm adding it because otherwise you're going to be like, dude, 50 cranial nerves come out of this hole that we don't even have to know. No, no, no. We shall add it in so that you do have to know it. We're in temporal bone land, and our first uh, hole is very difficult to see on our picture, but very easy to see in reality. It's the internal acoustic meatus, internal acoustic meatus, internal auditory meatus, or internal auditory canal. Really? Your book calls it internal acoustic meatus. I called it internal auditory canal somewhere and internal auditory meatus somewhere else. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's why anatomy is so fun because you get to like learn 30 names for every structure because there just isn't enough right now for you to do. Now, I believe that this right there, oops, that little thing that I just put a dot on, that is, I'm going to change the color of my pen. We're going to go for like something red. Maybe that will work. This um, spot is the internal acoustic meatus or whatever you want to call it. You can't stick your probe actually through it. It's found in the rocky, bumpy region. Take these guys out. It's found in the bumpy region of the um, temporal bone. And it makes sense, right? Because what was inside that really hard, rocky part of the temporal bone? Your inner ear, like all your ear parts are embedded in that skull bone. And so, yeah, it has to be well protected and, yeah, we got to have a way to get stuff in and out. So um, your cranial nerve eight, the auditory nerve, travels through the inner internal acoustic meatus. Your external acoustic meatus, we don't have any, there I go, we don't have any uh, cranial nerves that are passing through there. We don't have anything passing through there except for earwax when you go. That's about all we're going to say about that. The stylomastoid foramen, we already kind of talked about this one. It's between the styloid process and the mastoid process. And it's right here. You can kind of see it. And here's the styloid process and here's the mastoid process. And that's where my little styloid, stylomastoid foramen is. That guy has um, cranial nerve seven, the facial nerve, travels out of that little tiny hole. Um, we have, okay, the next one, the carotid canal is going to take a little bit of explanation. I think I'm going to do the carotid canal and the jugular foramen kind of together because you can see the carotid canal nicely. I'm going to change to a new color. Carotid canal is right there. And you can see that really clearly, and you're like, yeah, of course, that's awesome. And are you ready for this? The jugular foramen is actually between the temporal bone and the occipital bone. 
And so looking at it from this perspective, you're like, really? They look like the exact same hole or they're right next to each other. It's really hard to tell the difference. So the thing that I'm going to tell you is that if you find the hole, there's a really nice hole. It's actually kind of medial from the um, styloid process. So that's a nice little landmark to help you out. And it looks like, okay, so I just stuck my pin in it so, or whatever that thing is. It's a really nice, um, clean, round hole. It's a little bit, it looks like it's a little bit hidden. I don't know, can you even see that? I told you that I couldn't help it. I was going to try to show you anyway, even though not only am I spatially challenged, but everything in the video is backwards, really. Now, okay, <laughs> so every time I move one way, it's like, no, it shows me going the other way. Crap. And I'm so spatially challenged that I haven't figured it out yet after two years of recording lectures. Really? Okay, there we are. Now, I want you to see where we came out on the top. If we look at it through the other direction, I'm trying to make it clear for you. Can you see, do you agree that, I just went out my eye hole, that ain't cool, man, that ain't cool. How's that? Check out how my, when I go in the carotid canal, I am moving, like my pipe cleaner is going to go anterior. Does that work for you? All right. Now I'm going to take another pipe cleaner. This one's green. And this time I'm going to go into the jugular foramen. And you're going to be like, I hate you. And that's okay. I'm used to being hated. I teach anatomy. <laughs> so look, here's a hole. And I'm going in. I'm going in that hole. I really am. Okay. Now, tell me true. Does it look like I'm going into the exact same hole? It totally does. I hope that maybe you can see, okay, there's a tiny bit of a difference there, but I'm going to show you where the difference is. They're easy to confuse until you actually put them in and look from the top side. The green one went into the jugular foramen. The orange and the yellow are in the carotid canals. But check it out from this side. The green and the orange look like they're going into the exact same hole. I find, now on our quiz, you can definitely, I will have pipe cleaners in skull holes. And you are highly encouraged to pick up that skull hole, I mean that skull, leave the hole in the skull, and then take a look. Like where does it actually come out and how's that whole thing working? and fiddle with it so that you, you can see. Just don't take the, whatever this thing, pipe cleaner, don't take it out. But it, I think that on something like this, you have to look at it from both sides to be able to appreciate the difference. All right. Carotid comes out anterior, jugular comes in posterior. And the jugular foramen is included, I think, in my occipital bone page or section but it's actually between the occipital bone and the temporal bone. And that's another little clue that I think is helpful. So this right here is my jugular, um, I should probably change that color too. That's my jugular foramen. You can see that it's like between them. And so you probably are thinking, well, where did the um, carotid canal go? And they don't show you the carotid canal from here. And, but it's going to come out like somewhere up here. It's just going to be kind of hidden up there. So that's cool. Jugular foramen. Now, this was carotid canal. This was jugular foramen. And there, from the back side, looks super clear, super um, similar. But here comes jugular foramen. Here comes carotid canal comes up like this. Even though they're coming, oh, shoot, I made it green. I know exactly what I was doing there, like that. On the anterior, or whatever that is, inside surface. They're both going in here. They're coming out in this direction. So in Wendy Land, that means that the carotid canal is coming out toward the anterior part. The jugular foramen is coming out toward the posterior part. That made perfect sense. So let's go to, oh, first let's list all the things that come out the jugular foramen. There's 
three of them. And it's nice. Are you ready? One of them is glossopharyngeal. That's cranial nerve number nine. And once you know, and, and think about this, your, your, like, your spinal cord is about to come out of your, your brain through the occipital or foramen magnum. And so you're really close to the brain stem here. So it makes sense that the, the people going through the jugular foramen are going to be um, bigger numbered cranial nerves. And indeed, it's number nine. So if you remember that it's hypoglossal coming through the jugular foramen, then it's easy because it's 9, 10, and 11. And 10 was vagus, so gigantic, fantastic vagus is going to come through that hole. When you look at the jugular foramen, you're going to be like, that thing's huge. It's huge, especially compared to the carotid canal. And that's because, I mean, there's a lot of stuff coming through there. And the fact that not only the jugular vein, but three cranial nerves, and vagus, one of them, like vagus does everything. So that thing's got huge. We should try to dissect out vagus. Um, hypoglossal, vagus, and number 11, which is accessory. Oh, lovely accessories. And they all come out the jugular foramen. Did I tell you everything else that came out of everywhere else so far? The other hole in the occipital bone is the hypoglossal canal. And who comes out of that one? Yeah, hypoglossal nerve. Fantastic. See, you guys are ready for the quiz already. Now, hypoglossal is, you're going to find hypoglossal on the inner surface of foramen magnum. And in fact, almost on the, like, find the occipital condyles and then go inside and there's hypoglossal canal. And so I could stick a little pipe cleaner through hypoglossal canal even though you, and look at this, isn't that cool? There it goes. And you can see how I actually, I took my, uh, I took my uh, <laughs> occipital condyle and then I want to go this way, there. And there's a little tiny hole in there and I've got a pipe cleaner going through it, but I'm going to pull a pipe cleaner out. Do you see my little hole? You know you do. And the hypoglossal nerve goes through that. Flip that page over. Now let's look at our sphenoid bone. Here's sphenoid. And we've got some stuff going on here. I can't remember if I said this when I was practicing or if I've already said it to you, but there actually is a hole in the sphenoid, sphenoid bone that we're going to add. And maybe I should write it down for you since, you know, I'm not doing very much writing. It's called the superior, superior orbital, really, really, fissure. Fissure. Who says we shouldn't write in cursive anymore? That does not say fissure. The superior orbital fissure, there's a whole bunch of stuff that comes out of there, like 92 cranial nerves. It's crazy. And I don't know if you can see the superior orbital fissure, but if you look into the eyes of a skull, into the absent eye holes of a skull, you will see a crack down the back. <laughs> Seriously, this is awful. Okay, there's my crack. I'm going to stick an orange pipe cleaner through the crack. And it's long. It's a fissure. It's not a hole. It's not a foramen. But it, I, can't, I don't know if you can even see that. But there's also, if you look closely in my orbit, there's a hole. <laughs> so I have a nice little round hole, and I have a really long, big crack. And the crack is the superior orbital fissure, and the hole is the optic foramen. And I'm telling you right now, who goes through the optic foramen? The optic nerve, cranial nerve number two. Are you ready for who goes through the superior orbital fissure? Let's do this. Cranial nerve three, oculomotor. What does oculomotor do? Controls eyeball movements. Dude, how about we throw all of our eyeball moving cranial nerves through the superior orbital fissure? That's a good plan. So cranial nerve three, which is oculomotor, Cranial nerve four, 
which is trochlear, and cranial nerve 6. I'm throwing this one over here because I'm going to do another one. Cranial nerve 6, which is abducens, that also goes through superior orbital fissure. And then part of cranial nerve number 5, which part? That's right, my friends, the uh, ophthalmic branch of trigeminal. So not all of cranial nerve 5 goes through the superior orbital fissure, just the, the ophthalmic branch, which, again, that makes perfect sense because that's going in and, and doing stuff in your face. How are you? So we've gotten 3, 4, 5, part of 5, and 6 through the sphenoid bone. We've got more in the sphenoid bone. Ready? Okay. We have a good little buddy right here, and, oh, dear, that's it right there. There's one, and here's the other. This one is actually probably the easiest of all of them because it's an oval-shaped hole, and it's ovale. Now, we used to have to know this hole as well, which is spinosum. So we had, and this one up here is rotundum. Rotundum ovale spinosum, and I put those together as Ross because I played volleyball with a girl named Ross, and she had her mouth open all the time. She was our setter, and whenever she did anything, her mouth was open, and it makes me think of a foramen, and so Ross helps me remember the foramina. Thanks, Ross. We don't have to know the S, but that's okay. We do have to know rotundum, and I'm going to tell you who goes through rotundum. Ah, nice. We did cranial nerve. We did the trigeminal, the ophthalmic branch. Well, through rotundum comes the maxillary branch, and through ovale comes the mandibular branch, right? Yes. That's nice. That's nice and clean and organized, and we take care of all of our trigeminal branches with the sphenoid bone. All right, I'm feeling happy. I'm feeling happy because guess what? The easiest one is last. The last one is the cribriform foramina that are found, seriously, in the ethmoid plate of, in the ethmoid bone, in the cribriform plate. And that's where cranial nerve number one, all those little olfactory twangers come twangering through there. I can't believe we just did that whole thing. I wonder how long that section was, like five hours? Maybe. Okay. You are rock stars, and I can't wait for you to come in and actually get your hands on a skull because you'll be happy. Whoa, skull and cranial nerves in one day. It's a lot of stuff. So come Tuesday, ready to rock and roll. See ya. Bye-bye.